What about deadlines? Can we, uh, okay, so this is like a therapy session. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, why, I, it seems like I don't, I only get stuff done that has deadlines. And so the one of the implied powerful things about time blocking is there's a kind of deadline or there's a artificial or real sense of urgency. Do you think it's possible to get anything done in this world without deadlines? Why why do deadlines work so well? Well, it's I mean it's a clear motivational signal, but in the in the short term, you do get an effect like that in time blocking. I think the the strong effect you get by saying this is the exact time I'm going to work on this is that you don't have the debate with yourself every 3 minutes about yeah. should I take a break now? Right? Like this is the big issue with just saying, you know, I'm going to go right I'm going to write for a while and that's it because your mind is saying, well, obviously we're going to take some breaks, right? We're not just going to write forever. And so why not right now? <laughs> and you have to be like, well, not right now. Let's go a little bit longer. Five minutes later, well, why don't we take a break now? Like we should probably look at the internet. Yeah. Now you have to constantly have this battle. On the other hand, if you're in a time block schedule, like I've got these two hours put aside for writing. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. I have a break scheduled over here. I don't have to fight with myself, right? And maybe at a larger scale, deadlines give you a, a, a similar sort of effect. Is I know this is what I'm supposed to be working on because it's, uh, it's due. Perhaps, but what you're describing is a much healthier sort of uh, giving yourself over when you talk about this in, in the new email book, is the process. I mean, in general, you talk about it all over, is, is creating a process and then giving yourself over to the process. The But then you have to be strict with yourself. Yeah. But what are the deadlines you're talking about? So like with papers, like what, what's the main type of deadline work? Uh, well, so papers definitely, but you know, publications like say this, this podcast, uh, I have to publish this podcast next, early next week. One, because your book is coming out. I'd love to <laughs> sort of, uh, support this amazing book. But, uh, the other is I have to fly to Vegas on Thursday to run 40 miles with David Goggins. And so I want this podcast that this conversation we're doing now to be out of my life yeah. like i don't want to be in a hotel in vegas yeah. like uh editing the like freaking out while david goggins is yelling an hour an hour 43 yeah. of your, of your <laughs> exactly. thing that you're doing. but actually it's possible that yeah. i still uh, will be doing that you know because it's that's not a hard that's a softer deadline right but those are sort of the life imposes these kinds of deadlines yeah um I'm not, so yeah, papers are nice because there's an actual deadline. Yeah. Uh, but I am almost referring to like the pressure that people put on you. Hey man, you said you're going to get this done two months ago. Why yeah. haven't you gotten it done? I don't see, I don't like that pressure. Yeah. So maybe we, now, first of all, I think we can all, I hate it too. We, we can agree, by the way, having David Goggins yell at you is probably the a top productivity technique. <laughs> we would all yeah. get, I think we'd all get a lot more done if, yeah. if he was yelling. Uh, but see, I don't like that. So I, I will try to get things done early. I like I like having flex. I also don't like the idea of this has to get done today, right? Like it's due at midnight and we've got a lot to do as the night before because then I get in my head about, well, what if I get sick? Yeah. Or like, what if, uh, you know, what if I, I don't I get a bad night's sleep and I can't think clearly? So I like to have the flex. So I'm all process. And that's like the philosophical aspect of that book, Deep Work, is that there's something very human and deep about just wrangling with the world of ideas. I mean, Aristotle talked about this. If you go back and, and read the ethics, he, he's trying to understand the meaning of life. And he, he eventually ends up ultimately at the human capacity to contemplate deeply. Uh, okay. It's kind of like a teleological argument. It's the things that only humans can do, and therefore it must be somehow connected to our ends. And he said, ultimately, that's where, that's where he found his meaning. But you know, he's touching on some sort of intimation there that's correct. That, and so what I try to build my life around is regularly thinking hard about stuff that's interesting. Just like if you get a fitness habit going, it, you feel off when you don't do it. Yeah. I try to get that cognitive habit. So it's like, I got it. I, got, I mean, look, I have my bag here somewhere. I have my notebook in it because <laughs> I was thinking on the Uber ride over, I was like, you know, I could get some, I'm working on this new proof and it just, so you train yourself, you train yourself to appreciate certain things. And then over time, the hope is that it accretes. Well, let's talk about some demons because I wonder, so okay, okay, there's like deep work, which, uh, and uh, the the world without email books that to me symbolize the life I, I want to live, okay? And then there is, I'm like, despite appearances, an adult at this point, and this is the life I actually live. And 
I it's I'm in constant chaos. You said you don't like that anxiety. I hate it too, but it seems like I'm always in it. It's a giant mess. It's it's like it, it it's almost like whenever I establish whenever I have successful processes for doing deep work, I'll add stuff on top of it just to introduce the chaos. Yeah. And and like I don't want to. Yeah. But you know, it's so, so you have to look in the mirror at a certain point and you have to say like who the hell am I? Like I keep doing this. Is this something that's fundamental to who I am or do I really need to fix this? What's the chaos right now? Like I've seen your video about like your routine. It seemed very structured and deep. In fact, yeah. I was really envious of it. So like what's the chaos now that's not in that video? Many of those sessions go way longer. I don't get enough sleep. Yeah. And then I the, the main introduction of chaos is it's taking on too many things on the to-do list. I see. It's, I mean, I suppose it's a problem that everybody deals with, which is saying, not saying no, but it's not like I have a trouble saying no. It's that there's so much cool shit in my life. Yeah. Okay, listen, I've. there's nothing I love more in this world than the Boston Dynamics robots. Spot okay. and, spot. The, and the other, yeah. And they're giving me spot. So there's an to do, what am I gonna say, no? Yeah. So they're giving me spot and I wanna do some computer vision stuff for, for the hell of it. Okay, so that's now a to-do item. Yep. And then you go to Texas for a while. And there's Texas. And, 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 and there's, everything's happening. There's all the interesting people down there. And, and then there's surprises, right? There yeah. are power outage in, in Texas. There's constant changes to plans and yeah. all those kinds of things. And you sleep less. And then there's personal stuff, like just, you know, people in your life, sources of stress, all those kinds of things. And But it does feel like if I'm just being introspective that I bring it onto myself. I suppose a lot of people do this kind of thing. Yeah. Is, is they they flourish under pressure? Yeah, and I wonder if that um, if that's just a hack I've developed as a habit early on in life that needs you need to let go of. You need to yeah. fix. But it's all interesting things. Yeah, yeah that's 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 interesting. Yeah, because these these are all interesting things. Well, one of the things you talk about in, in deep work, which is like really important, is like having an end to the day. Yeah, like putting it down. Yeah. Like that, I don't think I've ever done that in my life. Yeah. Well, see, I started doing that early because uh, I got married early. So, you know, I didn't have a real job. I was a grad student, but my wife had a real job. And so I just figured I should do my work when she's at work because, you know, hey, when, when, when work's over, she'll be home. And I don't want to, I don't want to be, you know, at, at, on campus or whatever. And so real early on, I just got in that habit of this is when, you know, this is when you end work. And then when I was a postdoc, which is kind of an easy job, right? Um, I put artificial, I was like, I want to train. <laughs> I was like, when I'm a professor, it's going to be busier because there's uh, demands that professors have beyond research. And so as a postdoc, I added artificial, large time consuming things into the middle of my day. I'd, I'd basically exercise for two hours in the middle of the day and, and do all this, this productive meditation and stuff like this while still maintaining the nine to five. So it's like, okay, wow. I want to get really good at uh, putting artificial constraints on so that I stay, I didn't want to get uh, flabby when my job was easy. So that when I became a professor and now all of that's paying off because I have a ton of kids. Yeah. So, so now I don't really have a choice. Uh, that's what's probably keeping me away from cool things is I just don't have time to do them. And then after a while people, you know, stop bothering. <laughs> well, but that, you know, but that's how you have a successful life. Otherwise you're going to, it's too easy to then go into the full Hunter S Thompson. Yeah. Like to where no, nobody, wants nobody functional wants to be in your vicinity <laughs> like you're driving you yeah. attract the people that have a similar behavior pattern as you yeah so if you if you live in chaos you're going to attract chaotic people and then then and it becomes like this uh self uh fulfilling prophecy yeah and it feels like i'm not bothered by it but i guess this is all coming around to exactly what you're saying which is like I think one of the big hacks for productive people that I've met is to get married <laughs> and yeah. have kids. Yeah. Honestly, it's, it's it's very perhaps counterintuitive. Yeah, but it gets it's like the ultimate timetable enforcer. Yeah, it enforces a lot of timetables. Uh, though it has a huge kids have a huge productivity hit. Though so you got to weigh it.